good morning um, in this video we're going to look at um, quite a lot of uh, concepts uh, it's much uh, for the preparation of the quiz one or um or 11 20 so those who are doing um health sciences medicine Another program that I've got 11 20. This is actually your target as you prepare for the quiz uh, coming up next week on Sunday. Um, 10 hours. So we'll start with um, looking at completing the square. Uh, this is a must. Uh, whenever we have an assessment, uh, this one does not miss, guys. So we'll try by all means to look at what doesn't miss and then to just enjoy other concepts. So we start with completing the square. So the first example I'm going to do, um, I'll put the steps right. In fact, I'm going to start with a general form and then I'll come back and put an example now so that we're able to follow, okay? So the general form. The one that will have steps. So if I'm given f of x as a function ax squared plus bx plus c. To complete the square, the first thing I do, if a is not equal to 1, if a is not equal to 1, so that's step 1. Step one, we make sure that A, um, the coefficient of x squared is made one. So what happens in step one is you, you factor out the coefficient of x squared. So we're going to have f of x is equal to a, and then we we'll have x squared plus b over ax. So I'm going to leave out c, because c doesn't have x. So when we say complete the square, the target is actually to combine those two x's that are there, there is x squared and x. So we want, we want to only have one x. So C doesn't have X, so it's not our interest. Our interest is X squared and the BX there. So AX squared and the BX. Now we've put out A and see where it goes. It goes to B now inside there where there's X. So now how do we attend to where it has gone there, the A? In the next step, which is a step two. So notice what happens. Here we divide the coefficient after I write it, okay? You write it first and then you add the half of that, meaning you multiply its denominator by two. And then you square this thing as you add it. And to avoid changing anything, you also do the subtraction like this, and then plus C, you see? The next thing now we do is, in step three, is we pick X squared, we pick it as X. We pick this sign that's here, the plus, and then get this guy from inside. We don't square them individually, we square them together. Okay, when we do that, we have picked these up there. Okay, because if you expand this, it will give you those three. And so now we haven't picked this one. So that one we can easily uh, use the square now. 
So it will be like this. Okay. And then step four, you do the expansion. So you would expand. So we are going to have A multiplied by the brackets. over 4a and then now we can go to the plus c okay so this is actually the final step this is completed you may wish to add those two you put them together so you can say okay step five i just want my work to look complete so i'll do this Minus 4a as the common denominator there. And then now uh, well, I can put a plus here to avoid issues. I'll put a plus so that I put a minus and then plus 4a is like that. Okay. So that's how that's how it looks like. That's the final thing. So now the abilities and properties that we have here, we have one, the line of symmetry. Line of symmetry is the line x plus b over 2a is equal to zero, which normally we solve as x is equal to minus b over 2a. The one that is in the bracket you get to zero gives you the line of symmetry. And then if, if a is greater than zero, then I'll have the minimum, the minimum turning point, which is going to be a negative b over 2a comma negative b squared plus 4ac over 4a like this okay and then after that we go to well in the minimum turning point as you can see uh, there was the of symmetry there that we have used inside so come back uh, if a is less than zero, then the same thing would have become the maximum point. Okay. So it will become the maximum point. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is that we we'll have the maximum or minimum value being given by negative b squared plus 4ac over 4a, like that. So this comes after you've already had in the first. So I've said maximum or minimum because you already have your a there. Remember I've told you how a is going to help us name that uh, that value or the point, okay? So there are two things that I need to check my a. I can check my a even before I start I'm completing the square. A is there, it's, multi it's being multiplied by x squared. So after I identify what my a is, then I can now move in and say, okay, since A is positive or negative, this is what I have. And this is how it's coming about. What's important is to know the steps for completing the square because they're very, very important. Uh, because this question doesn't miss. It comes with a graph. Okay, so now we do an example. So this was a general form. Now we do an example and see how the steps are going to be used. Examples. So one f of x is equal to two uh, x squared uh, plus three x minus five. So you see what I have: two x squared plus three x minus five. So meaning. Um, I start the the process. Okay, 
So the first thing I'll do is I'll do f of x is 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Like that. Then I'll say, okay, completing the square, I fact out a 2. And then I'll have x squared plus 3 over 2x. Remember, the minus 5 is always alone. I leave the constant outside. And then I go back. And then I, I, I go back and say, okay, uh, it's now 2. And then x squared uh, plus 3 over 2x. I just I write this one first before I can divide it by 2. So now remember to divide by 2. I just multiply by the denominator here by 2. So it will be 2 by 2, 4. This guy must be squared. And immediately subtract it. Close and then minus 5, like that. And then 2. Then I'll get x plus 3 over 4 squared. Remember, we pick this, that sign, and this. And then we are remaining with this one. So now this one, we use the square. 9 over 16 minus 5. Come back. Do the expansion now. So we have 2 uh, being multiplied by the brackets here inside and then we multiply 2 by 9 over 16 that's 9 over 8 and then minus 5 so these we can put them together that would be negative 45 negative 40 minus 9 that's um yeah, interesting this will be 2 uh, x uh, plus 3 over 4 squared minus 49 over 8. We're done. The square is complete. Okay, this is 3 here. So the square is complete. Okay? I have everything. Now I start checking. What is my A? Remember I want to sketch? So A is equal to 2, which is greater than 0. So what do we have? We have the minimum. Okay, you have the minimum turning point. Of what? The minimum turning point is line of symmetry, which is negative three comma four, negative three over four comma negative forty nine over eight. Remember, this one when picking it because we're getting it to zero, we're supposed to do x plus three over four equal to zero, so that you get x is equal to minus 3 over 4, like that. Okay, so you, 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 you need to always remember that you don't pick it directly. You ex exchange the sign there, you switch the sign, and then get the negative if it was positive, get the positive if it was negative, like that. And then next, um, next you're going to have, um, um, what we need, so we don't have the turning point, so now we need the intercept, the y-intercept. So now building up the sketch, the y-intercept is always zero comma, this constant, the negative five. So whatever constant is there. And then now the x-intercept. Okay, so in, in this course, there's no much restriction. We don't have much restriction, guys. If it gets, um, if it confuses you to start solving for x using the completed square form, you can go back and use the quadratic formula. Say x is equal to minus b uh, plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. The formula is always easy. You don't make mistakes. So you would say minus b, that is minus 3 plus or minus a b squared, that would be 9, then minus 4ac, so that would be 4 by 5, that's 20 by 2, that's 40, so it's plus 40. 
you see, over 2a, and a is 4, so we have 2 by 2, that's 4. So this guy gives you uh, minus 3 plus or minus, that's 49, the root of 49 is 7 over 4. So now we can separate. So we have x is equal to, if I pick the minus 3 plus 7, that will be 4 over 4, which is 1. Or x is equal to minus 10 over 4, which is minus 5 over 2, like that. And then now we have everything. So we have the x-intercept, we have the y-intercept, we have the turning point. And so we can sketch like that. Remember we said it's what? It's minimum. So we are taking it where? Minus 3 over 4, comma, minus 49 over 8. So here. And then from there, it's crossing. So it will go up. It will go up this side. Go up this side. This side is crossing at one. Here is crossing at minus five. And this side is crossing at minus five over over two. Simple. And I have the sketch. All points indicated is a, is a minima. So it's a quadratic. Okay. It's a quadratic. That's how you sketch it. That's how I sketch it, so just avoid making it look like it's a, it's a box there. This is a curve. Yeah, some curve, this guy. Okay? So that's how you always do things. Now, there are some functions that will not have the intercept. Don't bother yourself. Don't force numbers. If there is no intercept, move on. Do your sketch. A sketch can be there without an intercept. Okay. So let's try one. So another one. This was the first one. Let's try another one. Uh, example two. Uh, f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus, plus 5. Can I put 5 again? Okay, let me change. Let me change. Let me put, let me put 7. Plus seven like that. Okay, then now we start. So say, okay, solution. This is f of x. It's equal to x squared plus 3x plus seven, which is x squared plus three x plus three over two squared minus three over two squared plus seven. So notice when, when x are squared has coefficient one, we don't factor. We just move straight to. I just move straight to the thing. You see that? We just go straight. So we have x plus three over two squared minus. 9 over 4 plus 7. 
then we combine those. So it's x plus 3 over 2 squared. Um, that's 28 minus 9. That's 19. So it's 19 over 4. Like that. And then, so we check. A, so what we have identified is that A is equal to 1 greater than 0. So again, it's minimum. Turning point. And so, for the same minimum turning point, it's going to be negative 3 over 2 comma 19 over 4. Like that. Like that. So let's check. What about the y-intercept? The y-intercept is always 0, comma. So in this case, 0, comma 7. The x-intercept, so we said you can use the formula. So we have x is equal to minus b. So what's minus b? That's minus 3 again, plus the root of 3 squared, that's 9. Minus 4 times 7, that's 28 over 2. So this is going to be minus 3. Remember here is plus or minus? Plus or minus the root of minus 19 over 2. So if I have a negative inside the root, it means that there are no x in the set. Okay, so I don't need to force them to be there. So I sketch what I have. I sketch what I have. Okay. So what do we have? So we have 0, 0,7 as an intercept, and then we have negative 3 over 2, comma, 19 over 4. <laughs> as a turning point. So I put it there. It's minimum. So the curve will have to go like this. It's crossing at seven. Wonderful. So that's how we, we get the thing. Okay, so I was trying to demonstrate that there are times when there will be no intercept. And you should accept it. So don't argue with numbers. Numbers, you will use them the way they are. Okay? You use them the way they are. On the issue of the x-intercept, I've said there are no restrictions in this course. So you can always use the formula x, the easiest. You don't make mistakes there. And it's faster. Because they're just substituting. Okay. And the formula comes with the same thing. It comes from completing the square. So it doesn't look like you have changed the question. No. That thing gives us a formula. So we can use it. Okay. So now, these two examples enough for completing the square. Now we bring in a bit of some terms uh, that we get to use. Okay. A bit of some terms that we get to use um, in this course. So the first term, we want to look at even an odd function. So one, I will define f of x is said to be even if 
f of x is equal to f of negative x. Remember, I should put it the other way around. So that there's less confusion. So we start with the negative inside. So if f of negative x is equal to f of x. And two, f of x is said to be an odd function if this guy gives us a negative outside. Okay? And if these two doesn't happen, then it's neither. So f is neither even in our point if one and two are not satisfied. In other words, I'm saying if it's not even, then again it's not odd then it means that um, it doesn't get it doesn't get to be to be even I mean then it gets to be neither okay so if I try I check if it's even it's not I check if it's odd it's not and then it's neither and that's what you do there and so now next um we do examples So we have check if f is even odd or neither. Even or odd. Okay, so one. f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 6 into f of x is equal to 3x plus 5 minus x plus 3 plus x. And then the third one f of x is equal to negative 1 plus x plus 3. Okay, so solution. So we check for the first one. We were just want to check if f of negative x uh, is equal to f of x. So we we'll start with f of negative x. That is negative x squared minus 4 negative x power 6. Okay, and then we use the powers. So this will give us x squared minus 4x power 6. But this looks exactly like f of x, is it? Ah, so it's even. The second one, f of minus x is equal to 3. I'm just substituting where there's x, I'm taking a minus x. And the powers are left the way they are. Okay. So that is, um, that will be 3 minus x power 5 minus, minus x power 3. So now, and then, minus x. So now we're using the powers. So negative to the power 5 is negative. And x to the power 5 is still x to the power 5. So now the negative is coming out. So this negative will come out. And I have that. And then there I'll have a plus. And then I'll have that. So it doesn't look like it's the original thing that we had. 
the original thing had 3x power 5. So this is not even, okay? It's not even. So now how do I check if it's an odd function? I need to know also how negative f of x looks like. So I multiply f of x by a negative. So when I discover that it's not even, I do this. So it will be minus 3x power 5 plus x power 3. Oh. Plus x power 3 minus x. Ah. So now look, after I multiplied the whole function by negative by negative. What I'm, I'm noticing is that I now have f of negative x looking exactly as negative f of x. See, this guy is the same as this guy. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that f is an odd function. Okay. And I can tell from the powers, just looking at the powers, I can tell that I'm doing an odd function or an even function. So if all the powers of x are even, then it's an even function. If all the powers of x are odd numbers, then it's an odd function. Look at question one. x squared, x power six, all even, and it's even. x5, x3, x1, all odd, and it's an odd function. The third one, is mixed. It has negative one. There's no x there. If there's no x, it means that I'm having x power zero. And zero is an even number. And x power three, three is an odd number. So I have two different powers there. An even power and an odd power. So obviously, it must not be even. It must not be odd. But we'll check. First, I find f of negative x. It's going to be negative one plus negative x power 3. That will be negative 1 minus x power 3. You see, this is not equal to f of x. So, not even. Uh, so, not even. Okay? Not even. So again, I multiply the whole thing by a negative. What do we get? We get one minus x power three. Ah, again, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like the f of negative x, you see? So it's not what? It's not odd. So we are saying then f, is neither it's neither odd nor even. So f is neither odd nor even. Okay. So you just need especially I know when it's even, we have an easy time. Now to for us to have an easy term when it's an odd function, we first check if it's even. If it's not even, then we multiply the whole function by a negative. So when we do so, it becomes easy for us now. Okay? Because we we'll just go back and compare. That thing we found when we substituted negative x right out x, is it the same thing that we have after multiplying the whole original function by a negative. If they are equal, then it's an odd function. If it's not even and it's not odd, then you see it's neither even nor odd. Simple. So let's not get worried about what happens around. Let's just observe things and give them names. This is just naming. 
if a function behaves in this manner, it is called even. So I've named it. If it behaves in this manner, it is called an odd function. If it chose to behave this way or the other way, it's called neither odd nor even. Okay, so those were enough. Uh, the other ones, maybe we'll talk about when you guys are in attendance. So the next class I'll be having will be a live class where you guys should join and then we do a lot of discussions so that we can do examples on the draw sheets uh, and other questions. And remember, these questions are always there. We do a lot of concepts here. And if you want online classes, oh, they're there. Okay. So now I want to check uh, one to one. Functions. Again, f of x is one to one if f of a equal to f of b implies a equal to b. Example. One, let me say examples. F of x is equal to negative x over one plus x. So here we want to check if it's one to one. So we say, we want to make f of a to be equal to f of b. Now, what is f of a? So f of a means where there's x, I substitute a. Make f of b. f of b means where there's x, I put b. Then I come back here and equate those two. So I'm substituting where there's f of a. I'm substituting where there's f of b. And then cross multiply. So I'll have minus a, one plus b, minus b, one plus a. That is minus a, minus a, b, minus b, minus b, a, which is the same as a, b. So these have got the same signs, so they will cancel one side. And so I'll remain with minus a is equal to minus b. Divide and divide. So I'll get A is equal to B. You see? So I started with F of A equal to F of B. And I've arrived at A is equal to B. So meaning this is only possible when this is the case. So F is 1 to 1. Like that. Okay. And then two. Two, I would read on the other page. Another example. Uh, F of X is equal to X squared plus six X. Okay, so I, I start f of a is equal to f of b. So what is f of a? f of a is a squared plus 6a. f of b is b squared plus 6b. So I have a squared plus 6a b squared plus 6b. And so you see, if we factored out a, and we factored out b, it would look like we want to say a is, I mean, it doesn't give us a vibe. It's, it's, it's not getting anywhere. 
it's really clear that we cannot have a equal to b because there's this a plus six thing here, there's that b plus six, and those cannot just cancel because they are different. You get the point? So you can just cancel things there because they are different. They're not the same. So this guy is not one to one. Okay? It's not, not one to one. Okay. But it is a quadratic, is it? It's a quadratic because the square is two. Now for quadratics, there are times when we are allowed to make them one to one. Okay, so if we decide we can make this guy one to one. So how do we make it one to one? Okay, how do we make it one to one? These are questions that say it. if it's not bijective, make it bijective. Okay, if it's not one to one, make it one to one and then find the inverse. Remember, there will be such questions. If it's not one to one, make it one to one. So now I want to make it one to one. Okay, so I was just saying that if you need these lessons, please, I, I, I offer tuitions at different levels. So if you want, you can just contact me on this number. You can call or WhatsApp, especially WhatsApp. I'll, I'll respond. Okay. So to make it bijective, um, you complete the square. So you would say, okay, f of x is simply uh, supposed to be. It's simply supposed to be x squared. It's simply supposed to be x squared is equal to x. I mean, x squared plus 6x plus 6 divided by 2, remember? And then minus so that it will be x plus 3 squared minus 9. So to make it bijective, if you sketch this guy, what you notice is that it has a turning point at negative 3 comma negative 9. Okay. At negative 3 comma negative 9 here. And then it's crossing at 0. So it will be like that. The other side is crossing at minus 6. Okay. So now, what makes it not 1 to 1 is that there are more than one number that are giving us the same value if you take them in x. Okay. If I draw any horizontal line, it will touch the graph twice. So it's not one to one. Okay. So I can come back here and, and cut the function halfway. I cut it at the line of symmetry so that it stops giving me two values for some numbers. I only remain with one value. So I'll say, if I want to make f of x one to one, then it, it remains f of x. It remains f of x. But one to one if x is greater or equal to minus three. Then it's one to one. Okay? Because I've only picked this part. From here going to the going to the right. Should they say find the inverse? Then I'll say, okay, let my y be equal to x squared plus six x, but now it must be completed. So I have the complete one here. X plus three squared minus nine. So I can move the nine this side. And I'll have this guy. Then I can get the square root. I get the square root. So I'll have x plus 3 is equal to the root of y plus 9, which is x is equal to minus 3 plus y plus 9. 
Now, why am I saying minus? I mean, uh, <clears throat> plus root. Normally, it's supposed to be plus or minus. The plus or minus is one that makes it not to be one to one. But we have cut it halfway. So we have removed the minus part, or mainly the plus part. So now we have f inverse of x is equal to minus three plus the root of x plus nine, like that. So this is what we have as, this is what we have as our, as our f of x. That is one to one. This guy is one to one way. If you sketch it, it's one way. The one on the left. Okay, so you pick only one side. So this is where they are saying, if it's not one to one, make it one to one. So I've made it one to one. Interesting, not. Ah. If it's not one to one, make it one to one. So we have the answer. Okay. So we have quite a lot of questions that have reached the build up of the uh, quiz preparation. So they have just done completing the square, uh, even odd functions, uh, one to one, and then making it one to one if it's not one to one. I've just done one example. So we'll do another example when you guys are in attendance. For now, we quit a day. Bye-bye and enjoy the lesson.